All right, uh, I'm Danny Martins. I'm one of the PMs on the PowerShell team. Uh, I specifically focus on SSH. You might recognize me because I also used to do uh, Azure Cloud Shell as well. Don't worry if anybody still likes Cloud Shell, there's a little flavor thrown in uh, throughout the, throughout the, the session. Um, great, so today we're talking about SSH. So you might say, why do we kind of care about remoting to Windows? What's, what's the deal with SSH? We already have WinRM, we already have RDP, right? So WinRM is available. It's been there. I think it's shipped in PowerShell 2. Uh, someone might know better than me, but it's shipped in PowerShell 2. Um, but it hasn't really been worked on in at least five years. As long as I've been at Microsoft, no one's worked on it besides servicing. So that just means it just gets critical changes. And I'd say all of PowerShell remoting for the past 10 years besides, past, let's just say three, have all been on WinRM. So we're and now at the point where we're saying, hey, we're kind of in this middle ground where we're, ooh, let's get rid of my Teams notifications. No, thank you. Um, we're now at the point where we're saying, we're kind of in this transition period of, we have everyone on WinRM still, or a lot of folks on WinRM, let's transition them to, to SSH. And kind of how I think about WinRM, come on. How I think about WinRM is equivalent to kind of PowerShell 2. It's there, you can use it, it's getting servicing updates, and that's about it. Everything for the future of PowerShell is not on WinRM, it is on SSH. We also have this other remoting protocol, RDP. Uh, a lot of folks will use RDP to connecting to their servers. Uh, if you ask me, they shouldn't be. RDP, you cannot audit. Uh, you can't audit mouse clicks. And you know, you can only have one user connected at a time with RDP. And, oh yes. And then if you're, if you're wanting to use a GUI, and I see that that's probably the only reason you're still using RDP at this point. You should probably look at Windows Admin Center. We're not going to be spending really any time on that today, but you should check it out. It's a fully, it's a PowerShell-backed uh, kind of GUI experience. Um, and anything you do in Windows Admin Center, I think about 95, 98% of that is backed by PowerShell commands, and that's what's being executed behind the scenes. And so it's all still auditable. All right, so on to SSH. So SSH is the industry standard for remoting. If you look at the broader heterogeneous environment ecosystem, everything that's unit space, SSH. If you remote into a router, how are you doing that? SSH. So it's long been that SSH has been the standard. Windows has just been the exception. Uh, SSH is notoriously secure. I think it's probably only had five to 10 CVEs over the course of its whole life cycle. It is notoriously secure. It's as secure as you make it and with I say SSH keys, it's sufficiently secure. Uh, SSH supports concurrent sessions. It's a big thing if people want to have multiple administrators connecting to the same machine, especially for diagnosing issues. This is big. And lastly, tunneling, right? This is the, I say, bread and butter of SSH. Why do you need any other port open if you can just have SSH open and just tunnel over SSH? And we'll, we'll show that a little bit later. All right, what you're really here for are demos. So we got a lot of feedback last year that people might be, I'd say, three, 400 level PowerShell users, but they're not necessarily three or 400 level SSH users or SSH uh, remoting with PowerShell uh, users. So I'm gonna assume that a lot of you know what SSH is. If you don't, find me afterwards, raise your hand, whatever you like. But we're gonna look at how do we enable PowerShell remoting on S over SSH and what are really the main hiccup points in that process. Right, so you can see here, I have just a Windows machine. Uh, this is a Windows like ev dev evaluation, bigger. Oh, I don't know how to make it bigger in Hyper-V. It won't matter. I have a machine, it's running locally. Great, trust me. <laughs> That's right. All right, so here I'm just on my local, local client. If I wanted to connect to that machine with WinRM, how would I do that, right? So it's the enter PS session, right? And then we're gonna say computer name, uh, I believe that's the IP address, and I already set up my credential. So I can just enter this, it's gonna be a really simple interactive PowerShell session, uh, and boom, I'm on that machine, right? No funny business, this is kind of where we're all at, right? How do I go and enable PowerShell remoting over SSH? How do I get SSH on this box? So any Windows build that has shipped newer than 2018 will have some version of SSH on the box, or considered in box. 
for any Windows client, that will have SSH client already there. You don't have to do anything. So if I just type SSH, it's going to work for the client side. For the server side bits, those are what's considered a feature on demand for all, the, for all those newer versions of Windows. And so that can be added with a, say, uh, an add Windows capability command. And so it's here. This is all in our docs, so don't worry. If you want to get screenshots, I'll have, I'd say, QR codes for the docs at the end of the, the session. Uh, so we can uh, add it via Windows capability. You can also go through the GUI and add this. So this is what we use to get what the inbox SSH. What, do I want, what if I want to get the latest SSH? You can install that from our GitHub repo. You can install it from WinGit. I believe Chocolatey also grabs our latest bits as well. Yeah? What about support? Yeah, so what about support? Great question. So for Microsoft official Windows support channels, what's in box is what is supported. There is support light for anything that's out of box. They will support you the best they can. But if it's a feature that's not what's in box, then they're going to say, sorry, you have to go to our GitHub account to get support. So if you file any GitHub issues, that is supported directly by our team. But there might just be a little more of a long tail on that response, just because we have so many issues that we can only get through them so fast and uh, address those issues in so much time. Which also leads into the kind of the shipping cadence, which is kind of the natural uh, next question. With Windows, uh, the Windows release cycle, it's, Windows releases yearly, and so there's yearly updates to what's inbox in Windows. But if you want the latest, we release usually a, about a month delayed anytime an open SSH version releases. So we just take the open SSH version, port it into Windows, and then re-release that. OK, so back where I'm at. I have now installed open SSH on my, ser on my server. So now we can do a start service, SSHD. Boom, easy. And then we're going to set that service to be automatic. Great. And so now if I try to connect, SSH is running. Oh, but I don't have a firewall rule open. So we also have to say new. Net firewall rule, and this is just the kind of the standard one that's in our documentation as well. So don't worry about screenshots. So I'll create this firewall rule. It's just allowing traffic in on uh, TCP on port 22, which is the default for SSH. So great. Now I have SSH running on this machine. If I exit back, I'm now on my client, so we'll clear this screen. And if I say SSH into that user, I can say, oh great. Uh, it says, hey, you're trying to connect to this machine. And here's this fingerprint. Here's this fingerprint. Ta-da, right? How many of you have seen this before? Great. I ask you a question, yes or no. How many of you have ever validated that that's the server you want to connect to? One. OK, great. Great. So I think you're the first person who's ever said they validated. So everyone I know just types yes, right? This is something that we're looking at, because as we're getting to the point where we want SSH to be the de facto, we want to make sure it's better than everyone else, right? And so this is one of the points where if there is a quote unquote vulnerability in SSH, this is, the, this is the spot. They just need to trick you instead of tricking a computer, which is, albeit, a lot, easy, a lot easier. So we're looking at ways of automatically validating that fingerprint for you. So now I've added that machine to my known host. It's going to be trusted in the future, and we'll auth into that machine and hope I get my password correct. Nope. Different keyboard. There we go. So now I'm on that machine over SSH. Pretty easy, right? All of that, all of uh, what I've shown you, you just, I'd say, execute a, a remote code block, and it's all going to be set up great easy. So now if I exit back, how do we do this with PowerShell remoting? I have SSH working. So I'm going to say, enter PS session, right? Now it gets a little weird, because I, I can specify this again, but it's still going to go over WinRM. What we have to do is go back and change some of the parameter names. The way we differentiate between using WinRM and SSH is by the parameter. So WinRM is computer name, SSH is host name. So we're going to say host name, the IP address, and then instead of a credential, it's a user. You can't pass passwords to SSH, I'd say programmatically. It is not secure. You'll want to use an SSH key or use it interactively. So here, I'm just going to pass it interactively. Password in, oh man, I failed, right? So SSH is saying, hey, you're trying to do something after SSH. You're trying to start this PowerShell thing, and I don't know what that, what that is, right? And so it's saying subsystem request failed, right? So how do we go and resolve that? So we'll kill this command, we'll clear. 
And so if I go back and I just SSH into that machine, or I'll, I'll just do the PowerShell session uh, again. Right, so I'm back on WinRM. How do I go and make sure that we can actually enable PowerShell remoting over SSH? So there's this file, uh, C, uh, there we go, program file. So there's this file, sshdconfig. If those of you aren't, if you're not familiar with sshdconfig, it's essentially the settings fi file for SSH on the server side. So we can go and make configure change, configuration changes here, and it'll be reflected. For this, the simplicity of viewership, or of viewing, I have an RDP session open, just so you can see that file nicely. So we'll just do notepad, great. That's the same file, this is the same machine. Gonna make this bigger, yes. Okay, great. So then you're hit with this block of, hey, this is what SSHD is, and everything that has the, the uh, uh, is commented out, uh, that does not mean it's the default. It's something really weird with SSH. They might give you an example. These aren't necessarily the defaults. So this is kind of another contention point of SSH. Uh, this is something we're also looking at. How do we look at what's in SSHD config? And how do we say, what is my actual run state? And how can we make that reflected here? So this is less confusing. So the main thing that we want to do, and this is the most tricky part, is we're going to go and we had a subsystem error. So we're going to find the subsystem section. Yeah. They lied. That was really loud. <laughs> so here, for, for Windows, we control this, so this is a lot more likely to be default, right? For anything on Windows, uh, on Windows SSHD, a lot more likely to be default. Any Unix system, there's no guarantee. And we've been testing it, they lied. Okay, so what you need to add, and I already have it added, I just have it commented out, is this line right here, subsystem PowerShell and the path to your PowerShell uh, that you have installed. Here we also have this no logo stuff. This will be, you won't have to kind of have these extra parameters once we have, uh, once you're on PowerShell 7 is default, uh, or PowerShell uh, 7.4 is default, sorry. Um, this is all also in our documentation since it's also more people taking screenshots, it's all in the QR codes at the end as well. So now I've enabled essentially, SSH knows where PowerShell lives, right? So I'll save this in my, my config file, I'll exit back out so you don't think I'm doing any funny business still, so we'll clear here. I'm still remoted into that machine, and we'll just do a restart uh, that service in SSHD config, because that, the, the file state does not necessarily reflect the running state, right? So now they should match, because I've restarted. Right, so I'm gonna exit back out of this uh, WinRM session. We'll clear just so you know I'm a new machine. Uh, and then we're gonna say another enter PS session. And actually, I think I can just go up. Uh, there we go. So enter PS session. Host name, because we're using SSH. Question? Because I was connected over WinRM. Yeah. And that, that's why I connected over WinRM, not over the SSH, the, with SSH to make that change. Yeah. But you could, everything I've shown, you could apply with like BSC or anything like that, right? So you don't actually need to connect to the machine to make these configuration changes. Um, great, so now I have the enter PS session. It's over SSH, we supplied my username, it's gonna give me my path, ask for my password again since we don't have a key on this machine. Come on, Danny, different keyboard. Third time to try, there we go. So now we're connected over SSH, right? And you know that because I did my hostname parameter and you saw this command failed because we had this, the subsystem issue. So now we're doing PowerShell remoting over SSH. I spent how long on that? Let's say five minutes, and that's because I'm talking. You can make this change in probably under a minute, right? It's a really easy configuration change. The only thing you have to change is your parameter names, and that's, the, that's how you differentiate and shift over to leveraging, say, SSH instead of WinRM. Question, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I'd have to review it to check with the latest, but odds, there's been no significant changes to enabling PowerShell remoting since that was authored. And so unless there was some, I'd say, upstream change from OpenSSH that would impact that, which to my knowledge there isn't, it should just work, it should work just fine. Exactly. Yeah. How early is server OS installing 
Yeah, so a question is, sorry, I've been forgetting to repeat. How early of server OSs can we install OpenSSH? So we supported everything back to Windows, like equivalent of Windows 7, which is what, 2012? Yeah, the 2012. I've seen people who've installed it on uh, 08 R2 as well. So, uh, and if you have issues with that, just file an issue on our GitHub repo. Um, technically, it's not supported, but we'll still try the best to make it work. There was a question back there. Yes. Yes. So uh, this is a great question. So we support uh, we support username and passwords. We support key. We support uh, curb. We support UV keys. Uh, we support AAD credentials for Linux machine, Windows machines coming soon. So we support, I th believe, all other forms of auth that uh, the overall OpenSSH supports. Uh, say it again. Yeah. So it's an Azure only, oh sorry, thank you. Uh, are using AAD credentials, is that an Azure only, is it on-prem? So this is where we kind of, this is actually a really good segue into the kind of the next topic of, you have Azure, which is I'd say Microsoft owned kind of machines, and then there's also the offering of Azure Arc, which is basically taking your on-prem machines or machines in AWS, GCP, et cetera, and basically anything that Microsoft doesn't own the hardware, and reflecting that into like the Azure control plane. And so that's free, I just wanna make that clear because people will say, oh, you're talking about cloud, I don't care anymore, you're gonna hit, hit my credit card, it's free. Um, once you've done that, you can use those AAD creds to log on to that machine. You don't have to domain join that machine into AAD or AAD, it's independent. Does that answer your question? If it's ARC enabled, it will. Yep, and I, I will show you, I can show you that at the end. Or I'll show it at the, once I finish this next demo, I'll show it as a thing. I think there was one more question somewhere. Yeah, so th those will all be in our docs. We kind of run this weird in between of how much do we document specifically in the Windows Server documentation versus the overall SSH documentation. We, our kind of policy is anything that we think is different is in the Windows Server documentation. Everything else should just work that SSH. And so if you go to like the SSH man pages, it's all there. Yeah. Any other questions before we move on? Cool, all right. So that brings me, we'll exit back out of this machine, back to our demo. So now I'm gonna talk about SSH arc or the long name is SSH access to ARC enabled servers. I just call it Shark because it's a lot more fun. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm very proud of that name, I just wanna say. <laughs> I know, I, my marketing hasn't improved my budget for that yet. <laughs> so uh, as I mentioned before, ARC is kind of like an umbrella term for bringing non-Azure hardware into the Azure management plane. Again, free, just calling that out now. Uh, Shark is also a free feature. So everything I'm gonna show you today does not cost any money, okay? Just wanna make that very explicit now at the beginning. Okay, so what, how do we get a machine ARC enabled, right? So I have this server I've been connecting to. Let's go and add that into ARC, right? So I already have the Azure portal open. I am already on the ARC page in the portal. I already have some ARC machines here. You can see, just to call out, this is an Ubuntu machine that is ARC enabled and I, connect, I can connect to that with uh, my AAD creds and I'll show that in a second. Uh, so we're gonna say, hey, I wanna add. So I'm gonna add a machine, I'm gonna generate this script, I'm gonna say, yep, this is the resource group, I already have one for ARC servers, I want it in this region and it's a Windows OS. That's it, I'm just gonna click next. You can add some tags to it if you want, I don't wanna add any tags. It's gonna say, hey, here's this block of code, right? You can review it if you'd like. I copy and paste it. I can say copy, and then we're gonna go back into that same machine. We're gonna, we're gonna off again. Man, come on. Great. And then I'm gonna say click, paste. And now it's gonna install the Azure Arc agent. So what this is doing is it's installing uh, the ARC agent onto this machine. 
It's going to ask me to authenticate. It's going to, I say, build that trust layer between this machine and Azure. Again, it's free. Alexander, question. Which one? From the top. Oh, yes. Yes, that's true. And if you're doing that for a public key reason, mm -hmm. so they say healthy, but still, I assume it's still being rendered by the same one to enjoy that kind of user reason. So that's true. Make sure that you're allowed to install and send logs before you do enable. The, the, the sending logs are viewable in Azure, so if I go back and say, hey, let me look at this ARC machine, that's why we're sending that information so it's viewable through the Azure portal, right? It's just for projecting reasons. Great, so now I have to say, uh, let me do a, a, an authentication. It's gonna say device code, we'll paste this in, say next. I'm gonna say, this is me. I'm gonna do my little two-factor auth, so give me one second. Do, 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 do. We'll see how good my service is down here. It is working just fine. Great. Yes. Great. So if I go back to this, we'll see where it's at. Great. So now it's finished. That took, what, less than a minute? Okay. So now I have the machine arc enabled. We don't turn on SSH connectivity by default. It's something that we require you to turn on because it's essentially saying, hey, I want to be able to access this machine. Our command to do that is AZCM agent. Uh, not disconnect, uh, it is uh, config set incoming ports. This is all in our documentation. Don't worry about screenshots, I'll have links at the end. Uh, this is only a requirement for our preview, which is probably gonna end in the next two months. Uh, we will be GAing, and this will now be an API that you can just hit uh, from a different machine. It doesn't have to be the same machine. Great, so this is all this is saying is saying, hey, Arc, I wanna be able to listen on port 22. I don't have port 22 open. Well, Right now, I still do, but I don't have port 22 open, and I can still list, listen on this machine. Just so you know, I'm not doing anything funny, and this is an SSH connection, so I'm going to exit out of here. Let me find that, uh, that um, WinRM connection, uh, computer name. Great, so here's that WinRM connection. I'm connecting against that machine uh, with, with WinRM. I'm going to get my firewall rule SSH, and I'm going to remove that rule. So now I'm saying, hey, I don't want to allow traffic on inbound 22 anymore. Uh, that's completed. And just to show that that worked, uh, we'll do another enter PS session. Oh, host name. So this is, again, PowerShell Remote over SSH. And this is just going to sit here and time out because it's saying, hey, you listen to me on port 22. Listen to me, and no one's ever going to answer. right? And so you can trust me on it, and we can keep moving, or I can wait and let it time out if you'd like. And usually by the time I say that, it times out. So, come on. There we go. A few seconds off. Okay. So, doesn't work anymore, right? So now I have my machine uh, with SSH in installed. SSH is still running on that machine. I have that machine ARC enabled, free. I have SSH ARC enabled on that machine, also free, right? I've installed Azure PowerShell on this machine already. I've already signed in. And now we have this uh, command, enter AZVM. Come on, Danny, there we go. Great, AZVM. Might be a little difficult to read with all the lines, but I'm saying, hey, I onboarded this machine into my Arc Servers resource group. So I wanna look at my Arc Servers resource group. I wanna look at this, this machine that's running. This is the name. I wanna connect as user, 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 there we go. And then this is just saying, hey, this is an Arc machine. This is how I want to connect. Because we also support this same command for uh, uh, Azure VMs as well. So this is just a differentiator to say, hey, it's an Arc machine instead of an Azure machine. So now I can say, great, I'm going to connect. Question? It's root, so it's not required to use Arc Correct. 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 Is there a parameter for that? Yeah. You can, you, yep, you can, you can, you can select whatever you want. 
Um, so now, it's, now it looks like a different machine because I'm going through the Azure layer, so I have to re-add it to my, my uh, known hosts. Yeah, question. Thank you, thank you. So the, the question that he asked was, uh, can I use other ports? Do I have to use port 22? The answer is no. If you want to have, the only thing you have to make sure is consistent is that you have SSH running on the proper port and listening on the right port on your server, and you enable SSH to listen with, i say, ARC-enabled servers on that same port, and you can supply that port here. Um, so I want to say, yes, I want to connect. And it's saying, yep, we're going to add it to our known hosts. Give me that password again. Come on. We'll do it slower. Different keyboard, you know. There we go. So now I'm on that machine. So I just want to be very clear. This machine doesn't have a public IP address. It, and now I've securely accessed that machine via the, I'd say, Azure and Arc. And if you want more details on that, we can go into that at the end. But I'm on this machine without a public IP address, without it listening or saying, hey, I want a port open. And I'm on as that same existing user. So any of the users you already have, you can access, uh, you can access from anywhere. Right, so now I can get to my machine from anywhere, but how do I go and be able to access that kind of environment from anywhere? So just so you know, I'm not doing any funny business. Now I'm going to, to Cloud Shell. And if you all are familiar with Cloud Shell, it's just the little thing here. Jason talked about it during the State of the Shell. Great, we have Cloud Shell here. Um, let me make the text a little, eh, we'll, we'll wait one second. So now I have my Arc enabled servers. We'll refresh. We can tell you that this other machine now showed up. This is the one I have running on my, uh, on my client. Uh, and it says, great, here's your machine, it's connected, all this great information. We have this little button over here that says connect. So I click connect. I'm gonna say I wanna connect with a password, put in my username, I'm gonna say connect in browser. Now, I'm gonna, it's saying, hey, this is the command I wanna use to connect. Let me run that for you. I'm gonna say, yes, I wanna add you to my known host again, our favorite little prompt. Who's gonna validate, right? That's right. And now I'm on that machine from my browser. So if I grabbed any of your laptops, I could still log in as me into the Azure portal and connect to this, this machine here. This does not have a public IP address. It doesn't have port 22 open, right? And now you can hit that from your phone, from your iPad, from your buddy's machine, and from the computer at the library, right? So now you have a secure access point via SSH uh, with PowerShell remoting that you can go say, hey, I want to be able to connect from any machine to any machine. Yeah. Correct. So the question was, do you have the ability to set IAM roles? So here, if you go into access control, uh, you can go and say role assignments, and I'll just say add. Uh, for local user login, there is, a, uh, there is a role here, if you just search login, there's a virtual machine local user login role. That has to be assigned. So, and that, so you can assign policy on whether you want to assign this role or not, right? So you can block users from doing this with existing Azure configurations. Or if you're worried about people doing it at all, just don't turn on the capability, right? Questions? If, it's behind, if the machine is behind a proxy. You're like, and it, yeah. Yeah, so as, as, long as, as long as you have that ARC agent on the machine, you can, get to the, you can use Shark to get there. But the nice thing about SSH is, let's say you have, uh, let's say you have 100 servers, they're all in the same network. You only have to install this on one machine because all of that, once you connect to the one machine, you can just do a SSH jump to any of the other machines in that network. So you don't have to install this in all the machines in your fleet. You just need it on one. Did that answer your question? When we are doing that, yeah. it's not related to SSH. Correct. But we need to stay secure behind proxies when we generate a script to promote a machine to proxy. Uh, yes. This is, this is where we stay proxy. Correct. That's so not. Later, proxy, we don't care. Relevant. Yeah, we don't care about it later. Once it's onboarded, we don't care. Yes. So the question was do we care about if there's a proxy uh, and when we're using SSH? The answer is no. You will care about that when you're onboarding, but you don't have to, that doesn't have no, that has no impact on the SSH experience. Any questions here before I show more fun stuff? 
How does this relate? Yeah, so, as, so how, the question is, how does this relate to Azure Bastion, right? And so this is a great question, because Bastion's used to get the private connectivity without a public IP address to Azure machines already. So the difference between Arc and Bastion is Bastion already has the, I'd say, the benefit as being part of the Azure networking stack, and it can go through the networking stack to connect, because Microsoft owns that machine. We have that host. Here, we don't have that machine. So we're actually installing a proxy on the client and the server, so that's what's part of the CLI extension, part of the module. There's an SSH proxy. It's a very small little thing that gets installed with the module, only if you're trying to connect to an, uh, an ARC machine, so it's not gonna be in there as bloatware for everyone else. Um, and that's how we're connecting. So that proxy is basically saying to Azure Relay, hey, I wanna hook in here, and then the ARC server on the other side is already kind of hooking in. So the answer for how does it relate with Bastion, Bastion's still used for Azure machines, Shark would be used for non-Azure machines, essentially. The yeah, correct. So the the thing that I will say is that we we know about that relationship, and we've been working with Bastion. The Bastion command. So I use the enter AZ VM. There's also an analogous AZ SSH VM command. Bastion and, I, Bastion and our team are working together to integrate those experiences. So you can just say AZ SSH VM or enter AZ VM. And even if it's a Bastion machine, it will still connect. And I can't provide any more detail, but we know about the pricing kind of debacle with Bastion, and we're working with Bastion on that. It's something we're aware of. I can't say anything more on. So, yeah. Questions? I tell you your hand first. Great, so, uh, so anything with, uh, so any part of PowerShell remoting uh, will have the hostname parameter. So if you wanna do invoke command, you can do that with a hostname parameter. The commands I showed for ARC machines are slightly different, where it's, it's only enter AZ VM and AZ SSH uh, VM at this point, but we have plans to expand that to kind of the full PowerShell remoting suite. Right now, it's just interactive. No, is there, the question was, is there a double hop limitation? You can do arbitrary uh, uh, SSH jumping. So keep going, going, going. Yeah. He was just clarifying that the limitation was with Kerberos, not with WinRM. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. So. And I'll, full transparency, I wanted to do a key gen demo as well. And I'm dog foodie Windows. And when I try to, to, to generate a key, I get a non SSH related error. And the solution for that was reformatting my, my machine. And I didn't want to do that in the middle of a conference. So <laughs> if uh, folks would like to walk through it together, I'm happy to do that, not on my machine, with you. <laughs> uh, but yes, with this, you can use SSH keys. You can do SSH key gen, you can add that key to your agent, uh, in my opinion. You shouldn't be using a password. The only reason I'm using a password is because I had the key issues and I wasn't gonna reformat my machine during a conference, right? So uh, I would strongly encourage you to use a key or uh, AAD authentication. Can you turn off using a password? Yes, so if I go back to uh, this pretty SSH deconfig file, if you look at all these options, there's a ton in here, right? And I, if people have questions on any of the ones specifically, I will happily go through that. But right here, password authentication, yes. So it's defaulted to yes. You can put no and uncomment it, and it's going to yell at me. Question? Um, we, hmm. Yes. And we're looking into key management on like a oh, question, thank you, That's a, I can never remember. So the question was, does Microsoft uh, is, have any like key management say, solutions, right? So there's, any, for SSH, there's not really a great solution for SSH keys. Um, we're working on improving that experience because really with SSH and key management, you can get JIT access, right? You can say, hey, you only have this key for this many hours, and then we're gonna revoke that key and we're gonna rotate it so you don't have it anymore, right? So 
Are there solutions out there? Yes. Are we working on them? Yes, it's something we're very aware of. And as we're getting to the point where we're saying, hey, we want people to move from WinRM and RDP on to using SSH, PowerShell remoting over SSH and Windows Admin Center, we know that like, that's one of the key points where you have to say, this is a premier experience for you to, to move. And that's going to be something that we want to be agnostic to if you're using a cloud or not. We want that just work uh, natively if you're just even using local connections. I saw the back first. So Correct. So essentially what he's saying is he's able to do that with uh, uh, AAD and an Azure using, uh, uh, there's a specific, I say, attribute for an SSH key. And then you can also do it with your, uh, your uh, private key, which is like Key Vault. And you can assign AAD credits for that. They're using it for AAD on Linux machines. It's not something that, is that correct? Got it. Sorry, sorry, I said that wrong. It's not an Azure, it's an on-prem Active Directory, an attribute. I think there was still more questions. I know so yours first. What's the type when we capture the output of a non-interactive session? For for if you're just doing like invoke command? Um, let's see. I don't know. Um, I let me just update here. Oh, we don't want that. Um, we want enter. PS session, we'll just modify this to invoke command. Great, and then we need what? What do you want to run? <laughs> I heard git process, and that's the simplest one to type. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to type it out anyway and just control V. Um, we're going to go. Enter a, well, yeah, we'll do this. Enter, uh, what was it? PS session, not host, not host. Computer name, great. Uh, new net firewall rule, great. Exit, clear. And go, can, what the heck, I thought I, oh, you're right, you're right. Uh, you're right, uh, enter. Uh, PS session, host name, invoke command, and grip block. Yeah. P GPS, not session. There we go. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, I forgot to give my cred. Here, let's do this. Credential. There. Oop. Oh, I did host name. Shoot. See? Oh, no, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. No, that, no that's right. That's right. Okay. See, even I get confused, you know? There we go. So it's still an object. Yeah. 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 
listen to go to Justin's follow-up session at PSConf EU. <laughs> um, I think there was a question here. Okay, we'll come back. <laughs> question <in the> back. <laughs> So we, we haven't been spending, oh, thank you. Have we, have we uh, spent any time, I'd say, wrapping like the native command SSH copy ID? Is that sure. great? Uh, no, crescendo, right? Go, go, go wrap it and put it on the gallery. Um, we haven't spent any time on that just because the way that we look at kind of the problem is there's a lot of stuff just with SSH and not necessarily PowerShell remoting over SSH. And so if we spent look at what our, that SSH team spends its time on, PowerShell remoting over SSH is just one facet of it, right? Just like how Shark was another facet of it, right? And so going and making, let's say, wrappers around those native commands is something that we have on our, our backlog, but we're just not there yet. Yeah. Yeah, so the question was, uh, someone was talking about using AD to, use, to manage keys for Linux machines, but we couldn't do it for Windows machines. Something we're aware of. So we're, we're looking at how do we, say, change the Windows space to be more accepting of keys in general, right? So that's with AD, that's within Azure machines, et cetera. There was, I think I saw you first. <laughs> That, so I, I told you beforehand, I, I thought you might ask a question, and this is it, so I'm, I should have put, placed a bet. Um, so the question was, uh, in Cloud Shell, we have these commands, and I'll just show you, since I have Cloud Shell open, uh, we'll switch this to a PowerShell session, make this bigger. Do, clear. Um, oh, man. So uh, the question, so we, in, in, in Cloud Shell, we have uh, this module, and so if we do uh, uh, git, uh, git module, and the name is uh, uh, Cloud Shell Utility. Yeah. So we have this module, PS Cloud Shell Utility, and so if we have that and we say git command, mm, we'll, we'll just do this. PCN module PS Cloud Shell. Great. So in, in Cloud Shell, and these are commands are specific for Cloud Shell, we have commands to enable, I'd say, PowerShell remoting, enable AZVM PS remoting. So um, as someone who used to own Cloud Shell, I'm very aware of these commands. So these are being updated. So we're in the process of taking these and making them, I'd say, better with SSH remoting. The enter AZVM used to be one in here, but we explicitly removed it. These are all in preview. I give no guarantee that they will work for your environments because they were set up a few years ago and they have not been updated. So the, I give no guarantee that those will still work. The one for Windows doesn't work. There we go. Perfect answer. Yeah, and so there's, we, we know there's issues with them, and that's why we're looking at that same namespace with the enter AZVM command, because we know that these are broken, and so we can get two birds with one stone, right? We can update the, the, the behavior on these, uh, these commandlets, and we can provide it to a better experience anyway. There was, I saw your hand first. Yeah, does, uh, does it support GIA? Does it support GIA? So uh, uh, does SSH support GIA? So SSH natively, has the ability to bind commands to authorized keys. So, uh, and it's a little bit complicated to set up. There is documentation on it, but you can say, hey, I want to be able to use this set of commands when I'm leveraging this key. And so that's a native SSH way of supporting GIA, right? We, are, we have on our, I'd say, backlog of great features to have in Windows with SSH. A better wrapper around doing that to be more GIA-like is uh, is on our list. We're just not at that point yet since we're still here. So as you're making SSH connect, sometimes you have to specify a different uh, protocol, yeah. a different algorithm yep. to connect. Yep. And sometimes I'll throw that in as an SSH config file. Sure. Do these PowerShell commands like poke in and, and get like a little yeah. bit more SSH config file? 
yeah, so uh, the, the commands themselves, you can pass any, uh, any SSH parameter. You can also pass to the, uh, uh, the invoke command and enter, uh, enter PS session. There is an options uh, parameter. So if I'm here and I say enter PS session options, you can specify all the SSH options here. And so that's how you pass in these other uh, SSH uh, properties, commands, et cetera. Uh, I haven't tried it as a hash table. It should work, but I haven't tried it. But we can if you like. Um, so you. It is, but. Exactly, exactly. So we have plans to implement. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm the worst at it. So he sound, it sounded like the GIA implementation and the SSH, I'd say key binding, are two totally different implementations. So where should we spend our time, right? If you want an interim solution, look at SSH key binding, right? If that's one of the blockers for you to, I'd say, moving to, yeah. So if that's one of the blockers for you to say, hey, I want to move over to SSH remoting, and I can't because I don't have GIA yet, file an issue because that's the best thing for me to say like, hey, I have people asking for this. We know that's something we need to have, but the more you file issues, the more you say, hey, I want this thing, the higher in the priority it goes, right? So that's on our shortlist already, but that might just bump it to the top of that shortlist. Yeah, so we, we want to get to, to I can't comment spe on specifics just because the PowerShell team is a lot more open than the SSH one because we ship things in Windows by default, so we're a little more restricted on what I'm allowed to say. Um, but enabling GIA support over SSH and PowerShell remoting over SSH is something that we have on our radar and that we're aware of the issues on. Okay, other questions? I'm at, z I'm at zero time. Oh, I'm at negative two. Okay, fun things real quick, real quick. Don't leave. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so, so we talked about SSH tunneling and why, why we should turn off RDP. Here's an AZ, AZ just to throw in some Azure CLI. Here's an, the same equivalent Azure CLI command. Same, same resource group, same machine, same local user. But you can notice at the end I threw a dash dash RDP. And so what this is going to do, actually it's going to yell at me because I have an RDP session open already. So we'll close the RDP session because you can't do concurrent sessions. So clear that. We'll run that again. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, on my local computer, look for an unused local port. I'm going to steal that port, set up an SSH tunnel. I'm going to authenticate to, Azure, or to SSH, hopefully correctly. Now it's saying, hey, I've started an SSH tunnel over with RDP. Now we're going to auth with our RDP. And mm. <laughs> I know. It's my demo password, so I don't use it that often. But when I do, I use it a lot and not enough people. And ta-da. So again, this is over that same, I'd say, shark connectivity. And so you don't even need to have any ports open. You don't even need a public IP address to get this. You can get your RDP session without all those things, and you don't even have to have any port open, and it's all over SSH. So, kind of fun. So you use your local Windows admin password to keep up with it? No, I, I, so I, for, to log into this machine, for the SSH connection, I use that same pass, for RDP, I use the exact same password. So with AAD, it's a little more weird because the AAD that RDP supports is the type of auth that you do for that is different than what we do for SSH. AAD requires that you be domain joined for, uh, for RDP. We, for SSH, we don't require that you're domain joined. And so if I want to connect to a machine uh, with AAD creds, I can do that. We don't have time. Come on. <laughs> For, for SSH, not for RDP. If that's RDP, it's very new. OK, then I will check, because as of a month ago, they didn't support it. 
Okay, then we'll, let's chat. Let's let's chat afterwards because yeah. we might be talking about different things then. All right. So I mentioned before you can do AAD login with Linux machines. This is something that's coming to Windows. We're actively working on this right now. Um, so I have my Arc server. So it's the same resource group. I don't want my Windows machine. I want my Ubuntu machine, Ubuntu 20. So before I was specifying a local user. Now I'm not connecting as a local user. So I'm just going to say I'm going to connect to that resource group, this machine. It knows I'm signed in, let's just say Danny at Microsoft. And it's going to say, hey, you want to connect to this machine? Yep. Whoever says no, right? And now I'm connected to the machine. You can see I'm logged in as Danny at Microsoft.com at that server name. So that is also an AED role assignment. So if I wanted to block that, I can set that. And there's a role assignment for a contributor and a role assignment for an administrator. So you can set admin logins for, uh, and you can put that behind Azure uh, JIT controls as well. Justin. No, you can do this from Cloud Shell. Well, like if you do, just use Cloud Shell, right? Well, that's good, yeah. yeah, so you can do this from anywhere, right? But if you want to do it locally, it has to be You don't have to, it doesn't have to be joined, you just have to auth. So you have to have Azure PowerShell, Azure CLI installed, and then log in. Because this, because this machine that the, like the machine I'm connecting to and the machine I'm, I'm, so like my laptop is in the Microsoft domain, right? But that remote machine is not, right? And so I'm connecting to that machine without caring about my domains. All right, great. All right, I'm over time. Any other questions for everyone? Otherwise, I'll let you go with. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm the worst. Questions? Great. QR codes. Win32. All other ones. Great. I won't put my shadow on there. I mess everyone up. I knew I was going to go a little over. Shoot. <laughs> I tried to go quick. I tried to go fast. I'm sorry. Nah, it's fine. I'd rather have the questions. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs>